Hi, I'm Stuart from the Norfolk Honey Company and welcome to another Beekeeping Basics. So today we're going to take a look at how to produce creamed honey. Um, this video has taken around two weeks to produce because we've had to uh, follow a set procedure. So um, what we're going to do is to go through the whole process from start to finish and uh, it's a method known as the DICE method. So let's get started with that. So we're going to follow the instructions that Professor Albert Dice first recommended uh, when he was at Cornell University and those are found in this book which is by Eva Crane. It's called The Comprehensive Study of Honey and it's a fantastic book. I'll see if I can find it online and post some links below um, but that's where all the details are coming from. So um, what we're trying to achieve is to produce a creamy soft set honey that has very very small particles of crystallized sugar uh, predominantly sucrose and um, normally if you just allow honey to set to granulate of its own accord you end up with something a little bit like this uh, and this has very coarse grains of sugar in it and isn't particularly pleasant to, to put onto your toast. Uh, if you follow the right method then you end up with a, a pale creamy honey that's very smooth, uh, has barely any graininess on your tongue and we'll take a closer look at these uh, on a plate and just compare what they look like and then we'll get into how you produce it. So here we've got two of my uh, honeys that we've produced this year. This one as you can see is very granular in structure. Uh, this was a jar of runny honey that was just left in the cupboard and has formed some really coarse uh, crystals, sugar crystals. And this one is one that um, we produced a creamed honey from earlier in the year and you can see the lightness and just how creamy and um, well delicious it looks. I mean this is um, very easy to spoon and what we're going to do is we're going to pop these on the plate and just have a look at them. Okay so I've taken a teaspoon out from each of the jars you can see that the creamed honey is a really fine texture and is very very smooth and more or less holds its shape as it's pulled around and it's got a very very fine granular structure and you can barely taste or rather feel the um, grains on your tongue whereas this if I spread it out you can see the crystals of sugar within the honey and it takes an eternity to dig it out of the jar because it's locked itself into the jar and this isn't quite so pleasant. The flavour is great but it's just not as pleasant with all of the large crystals. So what we're going to try to achieve is to produce this quality of creamed honey starting with a jar of honey that looks like this and I'm going to take you through the process from the very start to show you exactly how you can achieve it without having to cheat and go and buy some already creamed honey from a shop and use that in your own honey. Okay so what we have here is 100 grams of heavily granulated honey and the only way to get this into a nice smooth consistency is to take hold of your pestle and mortar and to just grind it. Now this is going to take some time um, but we'll come back after I've done this for a while and we'll see how the consistency has changed.
Okay, so we've been going for about five minutes and you can already see how the colour has changed and the granular structure has changed. You can probably make out that there is still quite a bit of graininess to the honey, but the large crystals have certainly disappeared and we're now left with much finer grains of sugar crystals. But we're going to continue with grinding this until it's as smooth as I can possibly get it. So this is after approximately 15 minutes. Again, the grains of sugar crystals are becoming finer and finer, but it's still not where I want it to be. I can still see the granular structure of the, the honey. So we're gonna just keep going. Okay, so here we are after about 25 minutes. Uh, we're now getting to a very light creamy stage and the vast majority of the um, graininess has now gone but we're down to some very fine um, grains of crystallized sugar so um, I'm going to keep going you might choose that this is adequate for what you want um, but I'm just going to keep going for a few more minutes to try to get it as fine as I can and I'm going to taste it to see if I can detect any graininess on my tongue and uh, when I can no longer detect that, that's the point at which I'm going to stop. So as you can see, that very lumpy granular honey that we started with has now become a very fine, smooth, creamy, textured honey and looks fabulous. So let's give it a try and see what it tastes like. That tastes fantastic. There's still a small amount of graininess to the structure of the honey. So I'm going to spend a few more minutes and just grind it a little bit more. So this is finally um, smooth enough for me. Um, this is now about 40 minutes of grinding and if I can somehow figure out how to pull up an image of the um, of the honey before we started then um, you'll be able to compare the two and this is just incredibly different from the honey that we started with. Um, barely discernible grains of um, crystallized sugar within the the honey structure itself and it's turned this wonderful creamy color which is fantastic so this is now going to be used as a starter in some runny honey and um, that's the next phase but before I go on to that I just wanted to mention that you can probably see around the rim of the um, pestle and mortar here and also just around the top here um, you can see the fine grains of, of honey that haven't been ground down and you really need to be careful when you take out um, the ground honey that you don't incorporate any of that because um, it's the size of the um, crystallized sugar that we have in this honey that will determine the size of the structure of the honey in the final product. So what I'm going to do is to just very gently dampen uh, a piece of kitchen towel and just wipe around the inside here and obviously remove all of this uh, larger crystalline honey and then we'll be left with this very smooth soft honey that we can put aside uh, and get started with our, our main batch. Okay, so I've decanted it from the pestle and mortar into a small ramekin and we've got about 120 grams of honey here and this is going to seed on a ratio of about 10% seed to, to honey. We're going to pour this into one kilogram of runny honey and use it to, um, to seed that and then once that's seeded we'll then use that bulk into one of our 
bulk buckets of honey to seed the, um, the main batch. So yesterday we produced the seed honey by grinding up that very coarse granulated honey and today we're going to add that to a small quantity around a kilo of runny honey but there's a couple of things we need to do first. So one of the issues with uh, producing creamed honey is that as honey sets and sugar crystals form they release water. So with uh, a jar of honey that has 18% uh, water content for instance, uh, as that um, granulates and crystallizes it releases um, the water into the honey and uh, a, uh, a sugar crystal will have maybe something in the region of 8% water content. So that's releasing 10% of that water into the honey and that will enable uh, yeasts to grow and develop and so what we're going to do is we're going to um, heat the honey that we've got in our seed container and we're going to raise the temperature of that to around 150 degrees Fahrenheit which is about 65 or 66 degrees centigrade and we're going to hold it at that temperature for around 15 minutes and then we're going to cool it rapidly uh, in order to prevent any further deterioration in the quality of the honey but that will kill all the yeasts in it and it will prevent it from fermenting as we move through the process so we'll head down to the kitchen and get cracking with that now this is our first batch of honey there's about um, just over a kilo of, of honey here and we're now going to pop this into the oven uh, I'm going to use a domestic oven uh, which is set to 65 degrees centigrade and use a thermometer to keep a close eye on the temperature of the oven and the honey. So we'll get this into the oven now and uh, watch it closely. Okay, so the honey has now been at 150 degrees for 15 minutes and we're now going to cool it as rapidly as we can. This is really important so that the uh, honey doesn't get damaged uh, and I'm going to pop it into our chest freezer and keep stirring it every five minutes until we get down to around 60 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit which is about 16 to 24 degrees centigrade. So the honey was raised to 150 degrees for 15 minutes and it's now been rapidly cooled outside in the freezer uh, and we're down to 72 degrees and that's an appropriate temperature to add our seed needing to be between 60 and 75 degrees. So I'll just grab the seed honey that we ground up earlier and uh, we'll add it to this, um, this runny honey. Okay, so I've added the seed honey that we ground up earlier. Uh, unfortunately, the camera battery failed and uh, I haven't been able to record actually pouring it in, but it's in there and you can see that it's almost all um, evenly stirred into the honey that we had earlier. So this is now ready to be set aside and we'll allow this to set and then we'll be using this as a seed for the main batch which is a bucket of about 25 pounds 12 ish kilos of uh, runny honey so it's been a week now since we made the seed honey uh, these are the two buckets that uh, have the seed in and they feel as though they're set so Let's pop the lids off and take a look at them and just give them a taste and see what type of structure we've got within the honey, whether it's nice and smooth or whether there's some graininess. So the one on the left is the just over one kilo of honey that we made. So this was the small batch that we ground up and turned this into our seed batch. And this one on the right is a larger batch that I made with a jar that, uh, of creamed honey, with a jar of creamed honey that I had already uh, had that we'd processed previously. Uh, 
So let's give those a taste and see how they are for graininess. So I can already see that the structure of this is really fine and you can see how smooth it looks. I hope you can pick that up on the camera. So let's just try this. Oh, I wish I could share that with you because it's such a smooth texture on the tongue. You can't feel any crystalline structure uh, to the honey. There are no grains of sugar in it. It's just totally smooth. Um, and I'm really pleased with that. That's come out really well. And I think we can do something um, uh, with that in one of the larger buckets of honey that we've got. Okay, so remember to use a different spoon, no double dipping. And this one, you can see this one is actually a firmer set. Uh, this one on the left was quite a soft set. This is slightly firmer, but it still looks really smooth. So let's give this a try. Um, yeah, wow, that's really fabulous. I'm really happy with both of these. So we've got uh, just over a kilo in this bucket and this one is just over two kilos. So using it as a 10% mix, that gives us 30 kilos of honey that we can now convert into a soft set creamed honey. So the next stage is to prepare the bulk of our honey. Okay, so we're out in the honey room. Uh, we're here with the Appy Melter, which I use uh, to warm up honey when I'm going to strain it for runny honey or my creamed honey. Um, and we'll just take a look at what I've got in the uh, Appy Melter here. Here we've got two buckets of this summer's honey. As you can see, it's not been strained as yet. So following the dice method, we first have to raise the temperature to 120 degrees Fahrenheit which is roughly 49 degrees centigrade uh, and we're going to raise that up to that temperature so that we can strain it and then we have to go back and heat the honey to 150 degrees Fahrenheit uh, to kill any of the uh, yeast that might be in it and then we're going to cool it rapidly. So we'll pop the lids on and get this up to temperature. We're back in the honey room the honey is now at 120 degrees, ready to be strained for the first time. So I've set up my small uh, settling tank with the strainer and filter on the top. And we've got a bucket here um, ready to weigh out the precise amount of honey that we need. I'm going to do two buckets with 10 kilos in each. And uh, we'll then see how the two compare once we get them into the jars. So let's uh, go grab the honey from the Appy Melter and we can get it through the strainer. Okay, so we've got our first bucket here. So we'll just get this into the settling tank. And now I'm just going to measure out 10 kilos of, of honey. So that's the first 10 kilos. We'll do the second bucket now and measure that out and then it's going to go back into the Appy Melter and we're going to raise the temperature to 150 degrees Fahrenheit and hold it there for 15 minutes and then we're going to rapidly cool it. We've got a large refrigerator outside in the garage with some space so we'll use that to cool it down rapidly so that we don't do any damage to the honey. Okay so we're almost at the end of this process. We've got the two buckets of 10 kilos of honey each. They've been heated to 150 degrees for 15 minutes and then rapidly cooled. We used the refrigerator in the garage and they're now sat in the Appy Melter ready to have the seed honey put into each of them. So we'll bring the camera in and we'll show you how we mix the seed into these two buckets. Okay, so this is the first of the uh, seed honeys. Now this is just over a kilo and this was the one that I used the pestle and mortar with and we're just going to pour this into 
the runny honey and you can probably see that it's a really fine structure um, it's like a soft fudge consistency Okay, remember to leave some in the bottom of the bucket as a beekeeper's perk for when you've finished. Okay, so that's the first one done. So this is the second one, and this is the honey that was already creamed from a previous batch that we'd produced. And I'm just gonna add approximately a kilo of this honey into the second bucket. Okay, so it's just important to note that the temperature of the honey, the runny honey in the buckets, is somewhere between 60 and 75 degrees centigrade, and that will produce the finest uh, creamed honey that you can. Don't add the creamed honey to very warm runny honey, because all you'll do is dissolve the crystals and all the hard work that you've you've put in will just disappear and become runny honey. So it's important that you cool the buckets down to between 60 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit, which is between 15 and 24 degrees centigrade. So for just uh, these small quantities, we're gonna use this stainless steel corkscrew stirrer. You can pick these up from most good uh, beekeeping suppliers and um, just be careful as you start it off and literally we just stir it in and take your time and make sure that it's thoroughly incorporated. So I forgot to mention that the um, corkscrew mixer is actually fixed to a battery operated drill um, so it's really simple to use. Just start off slowly just to incorporate it and make sure that you don't throw honey everywhere. Okay, so these are now mixed and the next step is to get these into the settling tank. Uh, give them a few minutes for, to allow the air bubbles to come to the surface because we don't want to incorporate lots of air into the honey. The creaminess comes from the structure of the fine sugar crystals, not from mixing excessive air into it. So we're going to let them to, leave them to settle down and, and then we can jar them. Um, it's also important to say that you don't need to have lots of expensive equipment in order to produce this. Uh, you can warm it up in a domestic oven. Um, if your oven has good controls on it, you can set it to a very low heat and that will be sufficient for you to warm the honey. So don't feel that this isn't something that you can do if you've only got one or two beehives. This is certainly something that everyone can do uh, to, to different degrees and with different quantities of honey. Okay, so I've transferred one of the buckets into the settling tank. Um, normally, if you're just doing uh, one set of creamed honey, you'd put the runny honey into the settling tank and mix in the seed honey within the settling tank. But because I was doing a demonstration with two buckets, uh, I felt it best to just leave it in the, in the buckets. So we're now in the settling tank. We're gonna take this and pop it on the uh, stand and then we're gonna start filling some jars. Okay, so we're now at the final stage. Uh, the scales have been zeroed, uh, the jars have been washed and prepared ready, and we've now got the honey in the settling tank ready to come into the jars. Um, this little polystyrene block is simply here to raise the jar up close to the tap for me, and um, the scales are officially stamped as um, checked for weights and measurements, uh, which trading standards here in the UK will insist. 
So if you're jarring up honey and giving it away or selling it in, in local shops, farmers markets, that kind of thing, you really need to get some scales that have been calibrated uh, and these are calibrated scales. Uh, so let's go ahead and pour some of this uh, honey and then it'll be a case of popping it on the shelf for a few days and we'll come back later and check that it's started to set properly. Okay, so it's been about a week now since we jarred up the creamed honey and here we've got um, three jars of honey. The one on the left is the honey that was uh, ground. The, the honey on the left is the one where the seed was ground from coarse honey. The one in the middle is just a jar of honey that I put to one side a couple of weeks ago and allowed to granulate naturally and you can see that um, there are fairly large structures within the honey whereas these two appear quite smooth and this one on the right is the honey that we seeded with previously creamed honey uh, that, that we'd made so this is the ground honey uh, unseeded honey and this is previously seeded uh, that we used uh, to make this one. There's really only one way to see uh, what the quality is like and that's to try them so let's see if we can pop the lids off and uh, have a taste. So I don't know whether you can actually see the texture on the surface of the honey, but that one's quite, the one on the left is quite a fine grain structure. The one in the middle has quite a, a granular structure. Um, and again, the one on the right has quite a, a fine structure and that's what I would expect really. So let's pop the spoon in and uh, see what we can, uh, see what we can taste. So this one is definitely a nice creamy structure, looks fantastic and I think that's going to be a very nice honey. The one in the middle uh, is okay but you can s physically see that there are grains of of sugar in there you can see the sugar crystallized within the the honey itself so I'm sure that'll taste fine but it will have a, a more granular feel to it and then finally this one again just you can see just how fine that the honey structure is and it has a gloss to it that that means that it's going to spread really well so I'm very pleased with that so there is only one way to really taste these and that's on some toast so that's what I'm going to do now So to sum up really, I thoroughly enjoyed making the creamed honey. Uh, the dice method is a, a longer method. You have to put a bit of effort in to create the creamed honey. But 
the rewards from it are fantastic. You get a really smooth, soft set creamed honey that has no comparison really to the uh, granular structure of just a naturally set honey where you take a runny honey, put it in a jar and just allow it to set. Um, the taste, the flavour is is pretty much the same really. The, the honeys that I've used all came from the same batch. It's just a different feel of smoothness on your tongue. Um, some people like that granular feel in their honey. I, I do sell honey to some customers who actually prefer to have that, that granular feel. Um, but from a personal choice, that um, creamed honey is absolutely fantastic. I hope you've enjoyed this video and um, please do give it a thumbs up, um, share it with your friends. I think this method is one that needs to be shared with people and if you haven't already subscribed and you've watched to the very end of the video thanks for watching and please do subscribe I'm going to try to share a lot more of these um, beekeeping methods uh, as we go through the winter and then into the new season and I'm already looking forward to the new season um, in the meantime uh, I'm going to get back to finishing off this honey and uh, have a fantastic weekend and I'll catch up with you all again soon. Thanks for watching.